A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Stave three, the second of the three spirits. Part one. Awaking in the middle of a prestigiously tough snore, when the bell struck one, a strange voice called Scrooge from the adjoining room and bade him to enter. Come in, come in, and know me better, man. I intend to. It was his own room, there was no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were hung with living green, and it looked a perfect grove, from every part of which bright gleaming berries glistened. The crisp leaves of holly, mistletoe and ivy reflected back light as if so many mirrors had been scattered there, and such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney. Heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne, there were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, brawn, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red hot chestnuts, cherry cheeked apples, juicy oranges, luscious pears immense twelfth cakes, and seething bowls of punch that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never. Have never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning, for I am very young, my elder brothers born in these later years. I don't think I have. I'm afraid I've not. Have you had many brothers, Spirit? (laughs) More than (laughs) eighteen hundred! A tremendous family to provide for. (laughs) Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night upon compulsion, and I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have ought to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe! Is there a peculiar flavour in which you sprinkle from your torch? There is. My own. Would it apply to any dinner on this day? To any kindly given? To a poor one most. Why to a poor one most? Because it needs it most. There are some upon this earth of yours who claim to know us and who do their deeds of passion, pride, ill will, hatred, envy, bigotry, and selfishness in our name, who are estranged to us and all out kith and kin as if they had never lived. Remember that and charge their doings on themselves, not us. Now, do you know this place before us? I do not. This is not a part of the city I frequent. Then let us enter. What has ever got your precious father, then? And your brother, and Martha, want us late last Christmas Day by half an hour. Is Martha, Mother? Why, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are. We'd a deal of work to finish up last night and had to clear away this morning, Mother. Well, never mind, so long as you are come. Sit you down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm. Lord bless you. There's such a goose, Martha. Hello, Father. Hello, Tim. And how did little Tim behave? As good as gold, and better. 
Somehow he gets thoughtful, sitting by himself so much, and thinks the strangest things you have ever heard. He told me, coming home, that he hoped the people saw him in the church, because he was a cripple, and it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars rock and blind men see. He is a blessing to us. I think he grows stronger every day. I'm sure of it. I am sure of it too, Bob. Tim! Tim! Call the others to the table. Come to the table. Father's ready to carve. Such a goose there has never been. I'll be bound. It's a very small goose. It is all Bob Cratchit can afford. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Now, now, let us settle. A toast to Mr Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. And I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children... Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I am sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do. Poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake and the days, not for his. Long life to him, a merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. My time is growing short. It is time to leave this place. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No. Oh, no, no, no. Kind spirits say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race will find him here. What then? If he is to die, then let him die and decrease the surplus population. You use my own words against me. Man, if man be in your heart, not adamant, forbear, that wicked can't, until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live, what men shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven, you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Oh, God, to hear the insect on the leaf pronouncing that too much life amongst his hungry brothers in the dust. Now take my robe. A Christmas Carol, adapted, directed, and produced by Paul A.T. Wilson. Narrator. Paul A.T. Wilson Scrooge Oliver Fry Ghost of Christmas Present Andrew Butcher Mrs. Cratchit Emma Turner Belinda Cratchit Nave Hunter Martha Cratchit Laura Holm Bob Cratchit Richard Heaven Tiny Tim George Wilson Music David Pudney Sound Design Paul A.T. Wilson. Copyright 2021. This production is published under the International Creative Commons Attribution License Version 4.